Today's video is going to get a little wacky. It's not all going to be things we know with high certainty. And it's going to be what some may perceive as conspiracy theories. But I'm going to perceive as a more educated geopolitical assumption. And there's a lot going down right now. And a lot of shifts happened in the last couple days. All of a sudden, El Salvador decided to legalize Bitcoin as legal tender in their country. In addition, shortly after, and this morning, just a couple hours after actually, the United States dropped the surprise. I didn't know this was going down. I don't think anybody else knew this was going down. We knew some infrastructure package was going down. We knew something about, you know, helping chip companies bring manufacturing back domestically was going down, which is the most critical part of modern technology and defense technology, chips, most of which are manufactured in China. We knew something was go like that was going down. Um, and we knew broadband investment was going to go down, both of which were going to probably be in this idea of an infrastructure package. We knew that was going to come or was at least being talked about coming. And all of a sudden, like nothing happened, we got a relatively bipartisan $250 billion combat China invest in digital infrastructure spending bill. And I think this is a great bill. I think this is fantastic. It accomplishes everything we need and need most. And it's a fraction of what the other stimulus bill would have been which could have risked inflation significantly more, and this caused bond yields to fall. Now, I was talking about wacky things, conspiracy theories. Where is this coming in? So it all starts with El Salvador adopting Bitcoin. And who wants Bitcoin to be the main currency of the world more than anyone? China. Why does China want Bitcoin to be the main currency out of anyone? Who's China's biggest adversary and competitor? It's the United States. What does the United States have? It has the current base currency. That gives the United States leverage over everyone who uses the currency and is a big reason why the United States has had such a strong global power since the end of World War II. And the end of World War II is when this became a thing um, because the United States won World War II. A lot went down. You can look into whole, all that. But after World War II, the United States dollar became the world reserve currency. China doesn't like that. So China would rather have Bitcoin be the world currency. Um, they don't want it to threaten the yuan, but they just want to kind of debase the dollar. And they're happy as long as it's not the dollar. Now, some weird things also happen with that. China banned crypto mining in China. Um, that's strange. But we saw after that El Salvador is now connecting itself to a volcano through its state-owned energy company to, um, to mine Bitcoin. And a couple of interesting things have happened in the relationship between El Salvador and China. China has recently given $500 million to El Salvador for no conditions investments. This is contrary to conditions investments the United States has given, conditioned on proper good governance and good spending of the money. If you ask me, okay, fine, we might give you some relief, but you gotta use it properly. No conditions, you can give it to the cartels. Maybe that's something to do with this. Anyways, the United States has several El Salvadorian leaders on the list of corrupt politicians for their connections to cartels. Um, in addition, we saw today that China gave vaccines to El Salvador, um, a monetary transaction. And shortly after, the United States said it was going to give or buy 500 million vaccines to distribute around the world to low-income countries. So conspiracy theory here, China and El Salvador are joining and growing an alliance, just like China and Iran, great countries. Just kidding, that's sarcasm. They're terrible countries, really terrible countries. Um, particularly Iran and particularly China. El Salvador, which means the savior in Spanish. 
Um, and, you know, is similar to what communism proposes, the savior against capitalism, the most successful economic system ever seen that has created the most wealth um, for everyone, not just the wealthy. Highest quality of life for the people at the bottom here in the United States. So, and you know, you can get as much on unemployment benefits here in the United States as the average income in China. But whatever, <laughs> whatever. So just things we're thinking about. And, uh, you know, obviously, I don't know. I don't know deep rooted things about what are going on between Xi Jinping and Bukele, 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 the uh, El Salvadoran president. And I don't know if that is related to the United States response and interesting responses that we are seeing today. I don't know. I just have some theories and uh, I'm sharing these theories with you so you can think about them and maybe we'll start seeing other things and be connecting the dots. You know, it would be nice if you had been thinking in this abstract way for several months since before COVID even started. Since the U.S.-China trade deal was signed and uh, maybe you would, you know, have the same, I'm not saying with 100% certainty, you know, I, I led this video off, I'm not certain, but maybe you would have a higher level of um, certainty in these thoughts and, you know, not be so quick to dismiss them and the many others that have arisen in this highly unusual time. Um, so connect the dots. Now you've got this thought about China, El Salvador, U.S. responses and Bitcoin. And we'll see what happens next. You know, we're, we're observing here. We are observing. And we are uh, in the game of making money. So just, you know, freedom. Anyone can do it. Anyone can go on YouTube, which is banned in China. Watch this video and hear these thoughts because... I live in the United States and I have the freedom to say that. I have the freedom. So until next time, peace out.